Hello everybody, if you're watching, um, Alan, hello Alan from Missouri, and uh, Anthony from London, Richard from New Jersey, thank you for joining us. This is still a little bit of a test to be honest with you, so thanks for tuning in and just comment will you and let us know whether you can see me okay and also whether you can see what's on the screen as well. Uh, Fred, hi Fred down in Devon, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, can you see us okay? That's what I want to know. Um, we've got a camera for coming from the front and we've also got one from up above which we'll switch to so you can see uh, a top-down view of the keyboard as well. Uh, so let us know if you can see those. Uh, so what I'm going to cover today and you just ask anything by the way because I can see your comments as you're watching. If you want to ask something just I'll get back to you. Just write it in the comment section. So, um, SX players, this is an SX uh, 700 I've got here. Um, this is the uh, new series from Yamaha. I say new, they've been out for a while now, haven't they? And the SX 900 was the uh, bigger one, and we call them mini Genoses. Um, and that's what they are. They've got the, the operating system. In fact, if we can look at the screen, test the top down camera, if you have a look at the screen here, this operating system operated by touching the screen is the same as the. Uh, Yamaha Genos. And what I'm going to do uh, in this video is uh, cover some recent questions we've got from our SX keyboard owners and I'm going to do some playing demos and I've got some tips and tricks I'm going to show you as well. Uh, just for the time being though I'm going to just play while people join in with us from around the world. Um, some chat called David Cooper joined us. Um, I wonder if the fish are biting. Hi Terence. Thanks Anthony, thanks Richard, thanks Mr Clitheroe, and thank you Karen. Just let us know if you can see us okay. I'm just going to play for a little bit while people are joining in. Let us know whether you can hear the piano clearly as well, please. Thank you, Karen. Glad you can see us okay. Hello, Dirk from Belgium. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, right, so let's get into some questions. Now, a question we get probably most often with this type of keyboard is how exactly do you save your settings on there? And that's to say um, you've spent hours and hours playing around with the settings and you've found a nice combination of sounds that you like, for example. How on earth do you save them so they are there for next time when you turn them on? Uh, that's what I'm going to go through now. And it's done using uh, this section here, uh, the registration memory, sometimes called the regist bank. Okay, so if I set it up with a, uh, a piano, just as we had there, and my second voice, I'm going to set up with one of the synths that I like that give just a little bit of string on there. That's quite a nice one. And I'm going to mix the levels to how I want them. And I might add an extra voice in there as well. Let's go for something like a, a uh, choir. There's some very, very nice choirs on here. So 
So I've got a nice mix just how I want it. Now, how do I save it? Now, these buttons just here. So let's have a look at the top down view, um, the memory button. And this is all under the section of registration memory. What I'm going to do is press memory and then press button number one like this. Now, if you're thinking, well, hang on, why are these buttons blue? Why is that one orange? Why are these black? Uh, that's because I have something previously loaded in there at the moment. But forget about that. Don't let that concern you at all. Um, I've got a trick to get rid of them, but I want you to know that you can override them. So if you've got something in there that you saved last night when you were playing or an hour ago that you want to keep, this is not going to override it until you tell it to. So the process is like this. Memory, button number one. That has saved it provisionally in button number one. If I turn it off at this stage, I'm going to lose it. I have to go through this step. And this is something I, I get questions about all the time. The next step is to go to the registration bank, which you can do by pressing these two buttons together. And here we are in our regist bank on the screen. Let us know if you can read that OK, by the way, as we're sort of testing out the resolution of our camera and how well that you can see things on there. Um, incidentally, if you see a page like this with a little arrow at the bottom, that means you can return a little bit like the back button on a computer browser. You can go back to the, the root directory or the front page. Um, then to save it, you press File at the top and Save. And it asks you where you want to save it. This is in case you want to save it into a different folder. And you press Save here. Now, this is the point where it asks you for the name of this file so you can remember what it is when you turn it back on tomorrow morning. Um, at the minute, it's brought up the name of the previous file, uh, the previous registration, which I do not want to lose. So I'm going to press uh, this button up here, delete, and I'm going to give it another name. And I'm just going to call it Nice Piano. And press OK. There it is. Now it's saved. So if I turn the keyboard um, off and back on again, it would still be in there in button number one and it gives me that nice piano. Now, um, I'm just going to check <coughs> any questions are coming in. Uh, yep, thanks Alan for saying you can hear us okay. This is the same. This process is the same, um, Terence, for your SX900 as well. It's the same operating system, so this will work on SX900. It's essentially the same on Genos as well. Yeah, you can um, Alan, you can use this tip on Genos as well. So um, now look at the registration memory buttons again. And you notice there's still two other ones. Now those are my previously loaded ones uh, and I don't really want them there. Now something I like to do and I know that a lot of people out there like to do as well is start from a fresh batch and that's to say empty all of these out. And you can do this in one way by turning the keyboard off, holding down the far end key and turning it back on again. But I found a better way than that, which I'll share with you now. Uh, look on the screen here, and if you go over to uh, the first page, it's not going to be the same as yours, obviously, but on my first page, I've got this one here that's called blank. Okay. Now, um, watch what happens here as I, oops, as I press blank. Watch my right hand. Everything disappears. You see that? So I'll go back to a fully loaded bank and they're all blue. When I press this one called blank, it makes them all blank like that. Okay, now how do we make one of those? Uh, this is how you do it. I'll load up a full bank like that and I'll go up to menu on the top right. That was menu up here. Then I go to regist bank edit and I select, this represents the eight blue buttons all of those, delete them, and it says, hang on, Chris, do you really want to do that? And yes, I do. And that makes all of these buttons go blank. Then I can press save, save here, and instead of calling it Big Band Swing Pack, which was the name of the one I just loaded, I'm going to call it blank. And an extra tip for you is go back to the beginning and call it triple A blank. Reason being, it will then appear right at the beginning of your registrations uh, before the folders. Okay, so 
Um, let me read some comments out. Uh, thank you, Fred. Anyway, presetting volumes on styles. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by presetting. You can you can mix your style volumes and save them into the registration. That's got to be the best way to do it. Or save them as a user style and then save it into the registrations would be the best way to do that, I'd say. Um, okay, so going on to another recent question I had was um, how you've seen this particular person has seen us using this keyboard to um, accompany a singer. Uh, the singer's voice was coming out of the, the keyboards. Now, I was asked how we did that, and the way we do that is we had a singer sing along to a backing track that came from somewhere else, and we took their isolated vocal and we put it on a USB stick and then plugged it in to the keyboard uh, just here in the USB socket. This works on Genos and SX900. You can then play the isolated vocal, that means just the vocal with no music, through the speakers and you simply play along on top. It's a bit tricky to match your tempo to the singer if you're going to use the accompaniments, but if you know the tempo in advance that can be done uh, quite easily. And uh, we do have a video recently where uh, Flo, who works here, is, who is a great singer, she accompanied me on a uh, Yamaha DGX670. So do have a look at that video if you get the chance on ePianos TV. <coughs> Somebody asked, sometimes get a CB or a C, C stroke G as my displayed chord. Uh, can we switch to the top, top over camera? Uh, Charlie and I want to show people what that means um, why now when you play a chord on here with an accompaniment you'll know that it appears here on the screen it's saying a C at the minute a G now what this person is mentioning is that they are seeing something that will look like this I'm just going to go back Okay, can you see that on the screen? It says C stroke G. Now what that means is it's playing a C chord with a B bass. Now with a band um, and quite a lot of music, you want a rolling bass. It's not gonna play the note, uh, the root note of the chord. And I'm gonna give you a practical example of this. If I go back to just a regular piano, okay. So turn off the other voices. Now I'm playing, I'll get up where you can see me here. Uh, and I could do with the top down, that's it. So I'm playing a G with my right hand and a G here. So that's the root bass note of the chord. But if I had, if I wanted this type of effect, where there's a rolling bass, then I can get the band to play that because normally it would just play the root note in the bass with every single uh, chord that I play. Now, I'll give you an example of how it can work quite nicely. Let me just go back to my... I'm using one of the ethereal voices here now. Uh, this is one of the free play styles that play at your own tempo. Okay, now keep an eye on the chords here and I'll give you an example of how nicely it can work. Okay, so that's quite a nice way that you can have a rolling bass line rather than a, uh, a, a accompaniment note that just plays the root note on the keyboard. Okay, and 
everything I'm playing at the minute is morphing somehow into uh, into three lions. I don't know why, but everything, it doesn't matter what I'm playing, it seems to go into that. Right, let me see if we've got <coughs> any more comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clitheroe. Kevin asks, Kevin Arthur asks, can you do the same save system if you've chosen a backing track registration? Yes, you can, Kevin. Um, that's, that's what registrations are for. Um, I like to think of it as taking a snapshot of the keyboard at any particular time. So practically anything you can save into registration and next time you come and load up that registration it'll be set up just as you set it up prior to that. So that's just what registrations are for. Okay. Uh, Alan Allen asked on YouTube recently, um, on the keyboard uh, do you save the songs as mp3 or WAV files? Um, you can save the songs as MIDI songs and keep them on board. If you're transferring a recorded song onto the computer, I'd always recommend transferring it as a WAV file rather than MIDI. You can't do it from this as an MP3. Um, MP3 and WAVs are essentially the same, it's just MP3s are compressed in size to make them easier to send. But you can transfer recordings from this via a USB stick as a WAV file to put it on a computer and it will sound just as you played it on the keyboard. So it's very, very easily done. I'll probably cover how to do that in a future video, by the way. Uh, this is just to remind everybody, uh, say thank you everybody for joining us today, by the way. If you, if you weren't, from us, weren't with us from the beginning, this is mostly just a test video to test uh, how well people can see us, how well they can hear us, and uh, testing both our angles out, because we've got a viewpoint from the front, and we've got one from the top. Hello. So you can see what I'm doing on the keyboard. So please keep the comments coming in about whether you can see what I'm doing and whether you can hear what I'm saying and whether you can hear the keyboard as well, please. Okay, um, I've got some tips uh, to share with you. My first one is going to be the soft reset on here. Now, if you ever <laughs> wake up in the morning and turn your SX keyboard on or your Genos and you think, something's changed on this it wasn't how i set it yesterday um, someone's come and been messing about with it and how how do i get things back to how it was yesterday there is a way to do that it's kind of a time machine on here and it's very simple to do um, all you do is turn the keyboard off and then you hold down the note that's furthest to the right and keep holding it down as you turn the keyboard back on and that will reset everything it won't delete anything so it's not going to delete any of those precious registrations that you've spent years and years doing, but it will reset most things back to normal. And that fixes, I find, about 95% of problems. If you don't want to turn the keyboard off, there is a manual way to do it as well uh, via the menu screen. So if we can have a top-down screen, uh, menu button just up here. If you press that, you'll go into menu one and menu two and go to menu two at the top and then utility and uh, while I'm doing this by the way people watching please just say how well you can read stuff on here uh, and whether it's too small whether you'd like a closer shot just keep the feedback coming in because we, we're really directed by you tell us what you think and how well you can see it um, so then go down to factory reset, reset stroke backup and on the right hand side it says page two of two I want to go to page one of two and this is where I urge a little bit of caution because make sure there's only a tick in that box that says system none of the other boxes and as long as you've done that you can press factory reset and that will take everything back to its normal settings as if you've done the reset where you turn it off and back on again uh, okay, I'm not going to do it now in case it interferes with our live stream. Um, okay, uh, here's an, uh, another uh, handy tip for playing live and trying to get the keyboard to sound a bit more like a live band, and it's to do with the endings on the keyboard. Now, I'm going to load up a, a uh, pretty standard jazz style here. 
and what I'm going to do is play a few bars and then I'm going to press one of the ending buttons and let it play out. I want to change my, still got it on fingered on bass, that would have been sounding a bit funny. Okay. And actually, what I really, really want here is a nice piano. Now, the ending there will play out a few bars for me. It was actually, I uh, should really have chosen the ending three there, which would have been a little bit longer because there's a way that you can, rather than have the band play out at their set tempo, you can tell the band, rather like they would in uh, real life, in a live situation, slow the tempo down gradually as you're cutting it out. Now, I'll do it again and watch what I do. The special trick is in, uh, pressing the ending button again, so just watch carefully. Okay, now eagle-eyed ones amongst you would have noticed that the tempo, which is displayed here, slowed down slightly. Uh, I'll give it another go and I'm going to deliberately press the ending button again for the second time too early and you need to be careful with this and experiment because if you do it too early everything grinds to a really slow halt and it doesn't work. Here's an example. Okay so that was probably a little bit too early that one so the, you've got to be careful with it and it does vary from style to style um, I always delay the second hit of the ending button. So you press ending, let it go for a few bars first, then press ending again that second time, then the tempo will begin to slow down and it should give you a good effect. So let's try and get it right this time, shall we? Okay, so that worked quite well. Um, let's choose another one to give that a go with, something that's got a bit more uh, to it perhaps. Let's go for something that's a bit more upbeat. Okay, so the ending that we heard there was without any slowing down. So now I'm going to tap that ending button again for the second time. So I press it once to start off the ending process, then I'm going to press it again about halfway through and it will begin slowing the tempo and the band will, the drummer will begin to slow everything down so you can make it sound a bit more real. Okay, here we go. Try again. Okay, so that's quite a quite a simple one, but it's a way to mix up your playing live and to make it sound a little bit more uh, realistic. <clears throat> I'm going to have a look at the comments now. Uh, thanks, Alan. About the top camera could be a bit wider. All right, so we need to perhaps get a wider shot. Yeah, I, Mr. Clitheroe, we would love to... I, I like the idea of having a zooming in to the screen when I'm doing it a bit more. In fact, we do have the option to put the screen out directly into the stream, but you wouldn't be able to see which part my finger is pressing. Uh, so we are playing with it, but thanks for the feedback. That's very useful to know. Yeah, OK, Anthony, definitely need a closer shot. Okay, I understand. Karen, watch me on your phone. Thank you. Glad you like that tip, Alan.
Yeah, okay, Terence, the writing's a bit small for you too. So we're going to bear that in mind and see if we can find a way to uh, make it larger for everybody watching. Thank you for this feedback, by the way. This is so useful because we want to try and make this better, all, each one that we do. We're still really in the testing process, so your feedback is really, really helpful. Uh, <coughs> now, what else can I show you today? My tips. Oh yeah, just um, one about saving your favourites. If you've got an SX900, SX700, like this one, or a Genos, there's quite a handy way to save your favourite voices and save your favourite styles as well, because there's hundreds in there, isn't there? So um, come to the top-down view, <coughs> and let's take voices as an example here. Uh, so we're getting a bit of... You know, I think we might have lost the top-down screen now. Hope you can see us okay. And this is why we why we're doing tests, so we can work out technical issues like this one. So I think, and you'll have to tell us watching at home that the top down view has now disappeared. So we're going to try and get it back for you and tell us whether it comes back. Um, while we're trying to do that, I do have some other things to mention. Um, firstly is if you haven't already, can you press the subscribe button here on the, down below on this video? Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're putting live streams out all the time now and we're going to be doing them each week and they're hopefully going to get a bit better with the technical uh, side of it too. Um, but we put loads of videos up there, so please subscribe to that. Um, and the other thing is the little thumbs up thing at the bottom. Please press that, the little thumbs up icon, because that is very helpful for us as well. Um, if talking about extra live stream videos, David um, will be with us on Tuesday to do a live stream on the Yamaha Genos. So if you're subscribed to our newsletter, which you can do by emailing us, um, through our main website. You can sign up on our website. It's a free newsletter we send out every week to all of our customers and our followers and we often include tips and trick videos, guides and special offers and events and all sorts. So make sure you're signed up to that via the website. David will be doing this live stream on Tuesday on a Genos. Uh, I've got a video coming up soon where I've got a Korg SV2 stage piano uh, in my shed at home. You might have seen some of my videos from uh, my shed and I've got some stage pianos, SV2 by Korg, which is a really great, um, gorgeous looking stage piano. That video's coming up. Uh, just give me a shout when we've got the top down shot back. Okay, good. Righto, and I've got some extra things to tell you as well, but for now, where was I? I was going to talk about uh, saving your favorites. So can we go to the top down screen? And I know we're getting a little bit of sunshine now, aren't we? So we might pull the, the blind shut. But the way you can save your favourites on here is by, rather than having to dig it out from the fourth sub-menu every time, um, what you can do is hold down the voice you want to save. And if you look to the left, a little yellow bar will appear. There it is. Look. So if I was in, say, accordions, and I thought, do you know, the uh, tango accordion bass was my favourite one. hope you can see a bit better now. If I hold it down, watch just there. That little yellow line is going to appear. Now, why that's going to make it easier for me to find next time is it's going to duplicate it and put it up here in this little star section. So in the star section, I've got everything that I've saved in that manner previously. So out of the 700 and something voices we've got on this keyboard, or your Genos or your SX900, the ones you like, put a little yellow bar next to it by holding it down, and that will move it and duplicate it into this star section, or your favorite section at the top here. And it works for styles as well, incidentally. If you go into the style section, and you've, your favorite style that you may have discovered amongst the hundreds on here is uh, Love Song. If you hold it down, this little bar will appear. 
and that will duplicate it into the star section at the top. There it is. So you can save a nice little selection of your favourites in there. I hope we've come back to you now and that you can see us okay. Uh, how do you, Philip Baldwin asks, how do I uh, erase a recording I made on my SX900? Keeps adding one on top of the other. Okay, well, yeah, I can show you that, Philip. Um, the way you would do that is go into your uh, song section, first of all, which you can do from the home screen. And depending on whether it's MIDI or audio, I suspect you mean audio, because when you record an audio song on the keyboard here, uh, it does automatically save it rather than requiring you to go through a process of uh, saving it and giving it a name. So I'm assuming you mean audio. That's how you get there. Look, from the home screen, um, if you can see that uh, there, Philip, home screen, go to the little bit that says audio, you'll find in the user section, all of the audio recordings will be there. And to delete one, you just press file, delete, select the ones that you want to delete and they'll highlight in white then press delete and it says oh, are you sure you want to do that and you can press yes all if you've selected multiple ones or just yes and that will delete them um, I think that's what you meant there but uh, assuming Philip that you were talking about MIDI songs it's it's easy as well you just go from the home screen this is to the not style you go to MIDI songs go to user section and in user, I don't have any, but this is where you'll see all of your songs. And it's just a case of pressing file, uh, delete, and then confirming it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Anthony, about the top line being obscured. I think that might be because we just uh, wiggled it a little bit while we were turning the camera back on, but we'll sort that out for next time. Uh, right, um, just a reminder for anyone tuning in at the minute that this is mostly just a test of our equipment. Uh, some of you were fortunate enough to watch our technical problems just a few moments ago, but please let us know. Tell us how well you can hear us, how well you can um, hear the piano, and how well you can hear me talking. Talking about hearing the piano, I better play a few notes on there, hadn't I? Um, so what I'm going to do is play one of the great free play ones. Uh, free play styles and for if you don't know what free play is it's basically um do you remember those old uh, cartoons where like, mickey mouse or something would stand in front of an orchestra and uh, wave his hands about and the orchestra would kind of follow what you were doing what he was doing and that's kind of how i think of free play in that there's no tempo no set tempo to a free play style it just follows what you play and at your own tempo as well so i'll play you that and tell us while i'm playing please leave a comment and let me know how it sounds and if you can hear it.
So uh, let us know how well you could hear that at home, by the way. Um, Alan asks, is there any way to search for styles that are free play? I don't know that there is, actually. Um, it might just be a good idea to find them yourself and then use that saving process to uh, save them into your favourites tab. Uh, the alternative to that would be to actually find them and then save them into a registration called free play, where you've got them all lined up. So sometimes solutions to problems like that require a little bit of lateral thinking, but luckily the system itself is flexible enough to be able to uh, let you do things like that. So um, find all the free play ones, save them in a folder in registrations called free play ones, and then you've got them all in one place and you know where they are. Uh, incidentally, if you, if you really do want to scour a list of the styles that are in here, rather than looking through the pages, um, on Yamaha's website there's something called a data list where you can um, see all of the styles and voices listed on a page which is quite handy for uh, knowing exactly what you've got your uh, hands on here. Okay, what is next? Ah, yeah, so talking about the SX keyboards, the SX700, SX900, um, I had at the beginning of um, uh, the first lockdown uh, back in March 2020, I was at home uh, with the SX900 keyboard and it was a real godsend actually because it gave me something to do and uh, I, f I really fell in love with the keyboard, they, they are terrific and um, I made my, one of my own registrations f uh, pretty much from scratch for a Beatles song called The Long and Winding Road and I used the style, I set the tempo correctly, I chose the right voices um, and I recorded a video of me doing it um, which we're going to play for you in a moment but this, the registration for it by the way uh, the nice thing is I can share it with you for free if you'd like a copy of it um, after hearing it then just email us at sales at epianos.co.uk and I'll email it back for free you can then put it on a USB stick put it into your own machine and you'll have it set up exactly as I did in this video which we're going to now
I had a lot of fun making that video. Uh, that was back in March 2020, and uh, the reason that the uh, the angle was funny from the from the uh, top down. Uh, Anthony, you're asking <laughs> why the, it sort of had the corners cut off, and that was because when I was recording, I couldn't get back to the shop because of lockdown to pick up any stands. So I had my phone that I was filming on uh, perched on the steps on my staircase that would cover the keyboard nicely so I had to improvise in editing and got a picture of the keyboard around the edges to make it kind of look like you'd expect but the consequence was my hand would disappear so <laughs> sorry about that but uh, incidentally if that sounded good to you and you want your copy of my registration setting email us sales at epianos sales at epianosco.uk and I'll just email it to you for free if you like and you can put it on your own keyboard um, now, before we finish, uh, just a few things to uh, mention. Uh, our showroom here in Banbury is now open for appointments. Uh, we're hoping, like everybody, that towards the end of July we can open fully and properly and invite customers back in. But at the moment you can come in and you can try things in our showroom uh, by appointment. So just ring us up or send an email. Uh, there's an appointment form on our website if you want to come in. Um, also, if you're interested in more guides like uh, some of the tips I've been talking about today, we actually have a guide, a, a written guide for Genos um, that works 90% for uh, SX keyboards as well, called the Genos Tipsters Information Guide. You can get a physical printed binder, or you can have a digital version that you just watch on the internet uh, via your computer whenever you like. Have a look on our website for Genos Tipsters Information Guide. Um, And that's about it, that's about it. Other, to, other than to say thank you everybody for joining us and thank you for the feedback. Um, if you can't see anything, if you can't hear us, if the angles aren't quite right, that's helpful to us because next time we do this, it'll be a little bit better. And hopefully the cameras won't close off either. So uh, thanks very much for watching. And the next live stream we're scheduled to do is Tuesday next week at 3 p.m. So make sure you're subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel here and you're getting our newsletters and you'll hear all about that and I'm just going to play a little bit to fade out. Thanks for watching everybody, see you next time.